We're going to hands and knees and then to uh, frog stretch, knees wide, big toes are touching, the arms are head forward, forehead down. So now because you are hearing and not listening because your eyes are closed in the head down position, you've got to listen carefully to your body or with care to the instruction. And you could rock the body a bit left or right and you're testing the waters the whole time. Can my knee do this? Can it do that? Maybe that's the instruction, but maybe that doesn't work for my shoulders. So then I have to adjust myself. So you have to orient every practice with yourself. Listen to your shoulders, the signals that you're getting from your body. With a large in and a big exhale, listen carefully. So you listen for the subtle signals that your body is providing. It's a neurofeedback. Your nervous system tells you, do this, don't do that. Big and big exhale, biggest breath. Then coming up on the inhale. And then on the exhale, you're going to sit on your toes. So you're orienting yourself according to your own uh, space there. And you're pulling the hand towards yourself. So you can, if you can minimize movement along your mat length, then go for it. You can practice however it makes sense to you. Change to the other hand. And then pulling your wrists. And then the other one. And we're going to go towards a, a cobra there with the hips towards the floor. And if you can do a deep back bend, you could go for it. You could also move the shoulders or else if you have to hold the body a little bit um, in a not so deep back bend for the lower back protection or shoulders or the back of the neck, it's up to you. Big in, big exhale. Once you're still in the practice, fix your gaze in one spot. So we're practicing this holding the gaze not the breath and allowing the body to sink and loosen into the practices big side breath big exhales relax your shoulders more big exhale and then slowly when you bring the body to toes under we're going to do toes onto the forearms as well so on the forearms on the toes with the head hanging down so a pose of child variation, let the head dangle, loosen the neck, big exhale, big sigh, and then rolling up on the inhale, sitting with the legs long forward, and it's in the movement between long legs and bent knees, pointing the toes down, pointing the toes at yourself at the previous asana and this asana that we awaken the body to its own internal flow with the eyes closed feel that in stillness we can form a soft place between a rock and a hard place so feel that that place between a rock and a hard place is a soft place if you can visualize easily visualize that if you take any two rocks in nature and you put the one on top of the other, you're likely to find a crack or a hollow somewhere that will provide a soft place between a hard place and a hard place. Big in, big exhale. Relax your shoulders and feel within your shoulder joints. If you don't sit there as you are with a sore knee, sore ankle, sore head or something, then it's quite unlikely. Naturally, we have in our lives parts of the body that's comfortable and so on and some that aren't we have parts in our lives that sits between the rock and the hard place probably all the time since we are where we are at big exhale relax the shoulders find the soft place feel we relax into that place 
Now we're relaxing into the forward stretch. The hands midway on the shins. Move a bit left, move a bit right. And feel yourself like butter and your hands are sliding quite easily towards the ankles and maybe you can grab the toes very easily. Big exhale, relax your shoulders. You are looser and more lucid and more clear, more calm. Big exhale, much more easily now. Back of the neck long, shoulders relaxed, taking it easy. See if you can connect with each toe with all your fingers. Bend the knees if you must, but pull the toes. The appendages. Imagine the little controls that manages the energy flow in your meridians, which they actually are. So it's a bit contrived, but nonetheless it's a fun thing to be the two-year-old that plays with your own toes. Big and big exhale. And then see that you get to each toe. And you turn the knobs a little bit. And then shake the arms out, cross legs. Big side breath, arms horizontal, and we're going to just rock a few times. Big exhale, spread the fingers, then make a fist while you do this. And remind yourself, we're working with, in yoga, we call them Nadi. Big in, big exhale, then same posture practice, but we're making the arms strong person arms. Big in, big exhale. Cross the legs the other way around and we'll do the same practice, going strong person, person, arms. Big in, big exhale. And then fists outwards. Big in, big exhale. We're working with our muscles, our muscle definition, our muscle tone. Spread the fingers, chest open, working with the body mass, the organ of body mass, body of organ mass. Big exhale. <sighs> Wrap up and down the midriff. And as you may remember, I said this in every yoga class before the coronavirus as well. We work with our immune system. We thump it up at the back of the neck, working with stress release. So we can be more alert. And then tapping the fingertips all around the brain. So you can go behind the ears, at the back of the neck, hypothalamus area, and then top of the head, the crown chakra area, and then the front third eye area. Close the eyes so that you can beat the fingertips on your eyes, pinch the eyes, and then you can uh, do your cheek like an old South African or Ricana Tani greeting. Big exhale, and then shake the arms out with the uh, hands, palms, and the knees with the eyes closed. Feel how the cheeks, the cheekbones under the cheeks, and the eyeballs behind the eyelids gets awakened by our practice. With the eyes closed, spiritually speaking, think of the inner Buddha. In yoga they call it the Buddha, meaning it's your higher self. Um, we tend to think of it as, um, as a Jesus or a, or a Buddha the, in, like in a statue in our religious or spiritual systems. It's also our higher self, our Christ consciousness, or the Christ within. Take a large in breath, big exhale, feel the world, the earth within. That's the world of the chakras, earth chakra, second chakra, creativity, third chakra, our place in the world, fourth chakra, our love. So are we loving in the world? Are we loving in the third chakra? Are we comfortable in this? Weird place, earth. Begin, big exhale. Natural place, but a weird human situation, perhaps. Big sigh. So take the weird away and feel yourself naturally at ease. Finding a soft spot between a rock and a hard place in the world. Our own world our own reality. Bring attention to the third chakra. Can we speak about this situation, our condition, how we feel, what we want, what we don't want? Can we 
you say yes? Can you say no? Big in, big exhale. Breathe through the throat chakra. Bring your attention to the third eye. How does it feel there? What are you seeing there? Do you have a doable, attainable vision or a grand vision? There's no wrong or right. We just want to be practical though. Breathe in the nose, out the nose. Then breathing through the crown, energetically speaking of course, we're using the breath to help activate the crown chakra. We're still breathing through the nose, the forehead. Breathe in, breathe out. You can cross the legs the other way around. And then just feel if when I take the arms to about 45 degrees above the horizon. And if you're looking at the image of any one person in the classroom, or yourself or me, big and big exhale, when your eyes are closed, now visualize the ideal. And in the modern world, they call it the, I think, the whiteboard or something model. But in the old days, we used to call it the blueprint of how we would like to be. Big and big exhale. Visualize the blueprint of how you would like to have your body as a design. With a big side breath, feel how powerfully the body forms a new blueprint when we visualize how we want to be. And we then nudge or stretch or uh, almost by remote control move the hands and fingers and how we breathe and how we sit big in big exhale why well, it feels a bit like remote control because it's the brain and the spine the central nervous system by which we command the body or ask the body and maneuver ourselves big side breath Bringing the hands to 10 finger mudra above the head with the elbows relaxed and the shoulders soft. Big exhale. Shake the head, neck and shoulders. Slow motion like. And then let's feel that very subtle movement I talked about earlier where we can feel, we can rock kind of imperceptibly visually with the eyes closed. Know that our eyes, our body language, we have virtually impossible to detect subtleties big and big exhale but we are self-aware and that's our state of body mind consciousness we're working with bring hands to prayer at the chest and feel that a prayer literally the word prayer and the action of praying has a hugely powerful effect but it's so subtle because we're sitting like this and somebody may assume that we're saying a prayer but it doesn't have an, a physical visible result so we're saying a prayer right now but it looks like nothing's changing visualize that maybe something in the world is changing that we're praying for if you're praying for a new bicycle for Christmas, you ask in a prayer for the bicycle to follow Christmas. And then to make certain sure you ask your parents as well. And then suddenly, magically, on Christmas Day, a bicycle appears, if you're lucky. Big and big exhale. And then opening the eyes, let's shake off the hands. Let's move to high knees. Big in, big exhale. And then we're going to put our right foot. Sorry, your left foot. We're going to the right. That side, where I mean. Thank you. Sorry about my instruction, Meg. And then to the side. Shoulder back and the head hangs down. Big and big exhale, relax your shoulders, let the neck and shoulders free. So this is about looseness and freedom. Big and big exhale, it's about security in our legs. So move yourself and check that you're strong. 
it's about letting go of the old energy, old breath energy, big exhale, go like ha, ah, big sigh of breath, soft shoulders, relax head, neck and shoulders, loose arms and shoulders, big exhale, bend the leg to come up on the inhale, big exhale. And change to the other side. So with our body awareness here, we are slowly loosening more and more and more. Big and big exhale. Shake the head, neck and shoulders more loose. Big and big exhale. Relax the head, neck and shoulders. Big and big exhale. Big breath. Loosen, let go of the old energy in the body. It may feel like a pain that's being released or it may just feel like a pain coming up sometimes and you're wondering why it's not releasing or going away it's because it's a process big in big exhale and coming up on the inhale big in big exhale with the toes tucked under <coughs> big side breath if you feel like it and you want to beat the lungs or Thump the lungs, maybe sounds a bit less like, less abusive. And then the chest, sides of the lungs, big side breath, thumping our soils for immunity, but also to clear some of the phlegm in our chest. And then to the back, see where you can reach. And then one arm up and one hand, palm open between the shoulder blades. So it's going to look like that. Big in, big exhale. Breathe. Light sigh. Rock the body a few times and then be still. Arm a little bit wider maybe. Deep in breath, big exhale. And then one more time, but only nostrils in, nostrils out. Feel how powerfully things change when you do these practices. Deep in breath, big exhale, reach into the hand, palm open. We don't put a body through the paces, it becomes rusty. And while rustic is all very nice and laid back, it doesn't have a cutting edge that we require for our consciousness and our body. Deep in breath, big exhale, chest open, stretch into the fingertips. We want to be at ease, breathing in the nose, big sigh with the mouth. Release, big in, big exhale. Breathe only through the nostrils. Big exhale. And bring the arms down. On the hands and knees. And shake up a leg quite high up. And you can bend the arms down if you like. Shake the leg up. Change to the other side. Circulation. Shaking the leg out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Big exhales. Okay, then those who can with safe knees, you can go to Vajrasana like this. If your knees are hurting, remind yourself if you have a second yoga mat, you could roll it up and put it behind the knees. Or if you have a pillow or something like I have, you can do that. And failing all of that, if it still hurts, you're still hurting yourself, don't do it. You stay on the high knees. Okay, so our shoulders are nicely loose nice as in it's a nice day with the palms open but also because your body is more loosened and moves more easily we can just for a few moments hold the palms open light exhale and then place the hands palms down and feel the considerable difference of contact palms to thighs where the knuckles were now tuning into the left and right shoulder height, height as in distance from the ground, and the length in the shoulder joint in its center to the hip joint under it in its center. So now you maybe want to think of something practical, like if you've ever been to an old-fashioned tailor, tailor meaning those people who make a custom clothing for you, and they measure you and they go you like this length and that length so that the clothing that you order fits you exactly that's how yoga practice should be but 
you measuring yourself. Eyes open and crossing the arms and crossing at the wrists. You can see how you can move in order to get the hands and the arms and shoulders relaxed and as tight as possible. Paradoxical instruction, but it's something like that. So feel that you're getting snug in there. So more snug as possible, not tight but snug. There will be some feelings of tightness. And then sitting still, you're raising the elbows and moving the arms and forearms up and away. And then you can be more yoga like with the hands if you like and make it look kind of pretty, like a hand in prayer, pretty. Uh, thumbs touching and fingers together, that kind of thing. Big exhale, raise the elbows because your body is becoming pliable. Big exhales. We're breathing, loosening, and sending more and more life force, prana, into our nadi. Big in, big exhale. Feel heat rising in the body. Big exhale. And one more in the nose and big sigh. And release the arms. So if you felt you overdone it a bit, then you can shake the arms out and then rub the shoulders, forearms, wrists, other side. So yoga has actually got quite a bit of, um, what do you call these things, technical speak, jargon, yoga jargon. So it's, uh, it's very um, apparent that when we do yoga and we're becoming aware of oh, where am I actually going to put my hands, that that position will look like a mudra as well. We call it a mudra because that's what it is. So you're going into that mudra. So it's a kundalini practice like all yoga actually is. And when you look at the chakras, there's a snake-like energy like that. And then it lands up looking like the arms. That's why it's, it's a mudra. That's why it's kundalini energy. So those are particular to yoga practices. We're going to put the arms the other way around. If you're not sure, you can check. I don't recall anymore. And we're going to just make sure that elbows are up, the forearms are there. We can loosen a little bit because we're going to take three of those heating breaths so that we can go large in breath with the big side, the elbows to the maximum height and the hands rotated at the maximum. Big and big exhale. The posture looks pretty. Big and big exhale. We're straining somewhat but not strenuously hurting ourselves. Big sigh, second time, heating breath, purification, in the nose, large, long and slow breath. Big sigh. Release the arms and then the hands straight, arms on the knees, fingers spread, crown up, back of the neck long. So jargon speak there, we're dealing with the Kundalini. Nadi in the yoga is our or are our energy lines or meridians deep in the nose breath, out the nose breath. Consciousness, common western world, I would. Big and big exhale. And we're working with body and mind, for sure. And energy, the subtle energy we can't see. But part of it is our conscious being. And each one of us who sits here, we have an individual conscious being, which for sake of clarity we call spirit, but also soul, and soul is a bit like the human being, particular body and mind with a name, particular energy, characters, and so on, characteristics rather. Soul is your particular piece of being spirit, big in breath, big exhale, however you want to phrase that for yourself, body, mind, spirit, all that is, but your soul, your particular being, and let's tune in into our own being, in ourselves, so feel the soul present in this community here. We're having a soulful community, else it's an unconscious or inept community. It's also inept if we're not in the body and mind. 
Begin with exhale. In that meaning, referring to not optimized. Big sigh. So let's train body and mind and whole being coming up to high knees. Let's do at least one strong posture before we conclude. And we can put your right leg like that. So it's a mirror of me, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't worked that one out. So we like this. And this is your right leg. Big in, big exhale. Deep breath in, big exhale. Breathe powerfully. Arm at the top and your crown pointing to the side of your room. Big in, big exhale. Now you can compare nicely. This is actually really useful. And my picture looks like your picture. Or uh, yours like mine. Big in breath, big exhale. Breathe powerfully, faster. And let's change to the other side. Once you're in the posture and our pictures look the same, mine like yours, yours like mine, we're going to start breathing powerfully. Big sigh and then 10 of those. Deep in breath, big exhale. Let's try 10. And bring the hands down. And big exhale. And then, knees wide, big side breath. Let's capitalize on the bit of extra heat and the 10 breaths on the one side there. Two sides are the same, symmetry. Big exhale, palms open. You could lift the hips a little bit, press the knees out wide. Big exhale, lift the hips and the body more down. And then, bring the knees down, knees down and the body up and back. So many permutations. Big and big exhale, we did it in class last night. Big exhale, looking like a bit of a spider thing. Spider-like practice thing, not an asana. And then just taking the legs along forward. Feel the effect this practice has on our body temperature, energetic flow. Big in, big exhale, wipe the feet. And then move these leg muscles. And then let's lie down on our backs. To Savasana straight away, palms open, large exhale, back of the neck long, chin tucked in, and then lying on our backs, big exhale, you could roll your head left and right a few times, by all means place yourself with another change or two, three. But at some point in the next 20, 30 seconds, bring yourself to a disciplined, relaxed stillness. If you need to adjust something as it becomes apparent, please do otherwise. Refrain from movement. For now, let's take a breathe, a deep breath together. Deep breathing. Another once or twice. As you breathe out the old and your ideas about the future, for that matter, ideas about the past and actual realities of the past. You're settling into the present moment now, here, be here, now. Like in meditation, be here, now. And feel the massive force, power of gravity. And in spiritual awareness of your body's alignment. Body-mind to soul, to spirit. Feel the conscious connection. Body-mind soul, spirit, and the total consciousness of this line, linear connection, lineage. Then feeling the spherical or the non-linear connection, the spirit is pervasive inside us. It pervades nature, it pervades the solar system, all the galaxies. 
the whole entire universe. Begin the exhale as you relax like this, dream a little bit philosophically. You don't have to call it a multiverse because the universe is already a unified multiverse, as are we. Our souls connect to form a community of spirit. Large, big sigh breath. Feel all disconnection give dissolve, and all connection turn on in a conscious connection to all that is. Just taking a large breath, feel what is your breath like, and do you have to make a bit of effort, which may well be the case to take a large breath and exhale. And you may naturally want to just breathe with a slack jaw, open mouth, and sigh out. Open the eyes to look up at your ceiling, your body lying on the floor, and then close the eyes again and bend the knees, feet to the floor, big exhale. Interlace the fingers and let's place the hands, fingers interlaced at the back of the head. Large exhale, relax the head, neck and shoulders, easy breath. Relax head, neck and shoulders. Big in breath, hold the breath, big sigh, following after a little while. Bring the knees and feet together and feet off the floor and the elbows up to support and hold the head up and we're rolling left and right a few times and then just gently hug the head up towards the knees so it's a very mild, soft, mellow hugging the knees. From there let's rock forward and back one or two, three or four movements, core muscles engaging, we're building a bit of momentum and we're seeing if we can effortlessly roll up to inhale. Big in, big exhale. Big side breath. Bringing hands to prayer in front of the heart space. For a couple of moments, let's recap to the loving heart chakra and the rooting root earth chakra. And we're all seeing third eye, a comfortable place in the world. Fourth chakra. Big exhale, and the second chakra, where we are creating our lives, how we are with spirit, how we are in the world, how we are in our hearts and minds. Big and big exhale, connecting to the crown chakra, where spirit and soul, amongst other ways of being, enters our, our being. In Om, saying the word in our own mind, in Om, Blessing of Om. Begin big exhale. Om to all that is. <sighs> 